Good morning, class. We are looking at final exam review covering from 1.6 to 5.4. Differentiation formulas, as always. Logarithmic formulas, various properties of logs, whether it's a general case, natural log or common log. Integration formulas, as well as FTC, fundamental theorem of calculus, we use mainly definite integral, which results in a number. Uh, so let's refresh everyone's memory about differentiation. When we deal with this, the very first step is to bring this up, writing it as x squared plus three to the power of one half comes up becomes negative one half. By the way, could we use the quotient rule? Yes, no need to. So four times negative one half, then the same thing to the power of minus one half minus one by the chain rule times the derivative of the parentheses, which is 2x. And this is the end of a calculus step. 4 times negative 1 half, same thing to the power of negative 3 halves by the chain rule times 2x. Now 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2 times 2x, makes it negative 4x. And we are going to take this down, make it positive 3 halves or we make it into a square root. Extended power rule again, five sits in front, the same thing to the power of four, and then we use a quotient rule. The quotient rule part, the derivative of the top, just write that quickly, f prime, it's a shorthand notation, f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. So five sits in front, this thing to the power of four, the derivative of the top is two times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, g prime, one times two x plus three, and you write the bottom squared. This is 2x minus, let me just write that, 2x minus 16 minus 2x minus 3. The whole thing adds up to negative 19. So let's see what we have at top. I want to make sure everybody can see that. So 5 and 2x plus 3 to the power of 4 is in the numerator, x minus 8 to the power of 4 in the denominator. And we write the last fraction. Now 5 times negative 19 times 2x plus 3 to the power of 4 is at top. The product of these two, negative 95, the product of these two gives us the 4 plus 2 as the new exponent. We want to differentiate implicitly. You put a raised dot in between. And the derivative of 4x squared is 8x times y. The derivative of y is y prime times 4x squared. This gives us 4y, y prime e is a number resulting in 0. A quick recap, 4x squared, 8x, so we put a raised dot here. So this is 8x times y plus y prime or dy dx times 4x squared, 2y squared, 4yy prime, any number results in zero. We move 8xy, We put these two together in, and we factor. The main thing we are concerned with is really y prime. 
And again, this is the only calculus step, everybody with the asterisk next to it. Now you divide the right side by four times x squared plus y and simplify, here's your final answer. We want to differentiate this. Uh, the way I mentioned it before is, if I'm differentiating sinusoidal functions such as this one, the way I read it, it makes a difference for me. I would read this as cosine and I'm gonna pause. I'm not gonna even read the argument yet, which means my shell function is cosine. The other function I'm differentiating cosine. So the result is negative sign. So ignore that cosine gives you negative sign. Negative sign of what? Whatever the argument. So write this negative sign of three t to the power of four by the chain rule. I need the derivative of that which is times now 12 t cubed. I put that in front and we are done. A small rock is dropped into a lake, circular ripples spread over the surface with a radius of each circle increasing at a rate of three half feet per second. Find the rate at which the area of a circle is changing when the radius is four feet. So we are looking at the circle. So immediately we need to know this, a piece of geometry. The area, pi r squared. The diameter, d equals to r, a equals pi r squared, d equals to r. Circumference, c equals to pi r. Because we are interested in finding the rate at which the area is changing, so we need A equals pi r squared. That's the first thing. So the radius is increasing at this rate, so that means dr dt. What do we want? dA dt, the rate at which the area is changing. At what point? When r is four. All of them we write as given. If we could go from this to this, that means we are translating and we know exactly what's going on. The ADT, so here's A, that means pi times two R dr dt or simply two pi R dr dt. Replace the R with four and dr dt with three halves. Both of them have units. So that means R is four feet, dr dt is three halves feet per second. Here's your answer. Notice I have two answers. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that we want to answer this one. Unless they ask for a specific answer with so many decimals, then you go here and you use the decimals. I wrote both answers in case. This is an approximation. This is an exact answer and we exact answer. The exact answer is 12 pi units square feet per second, units of area over the units of time. We want to find dy dt. And the moment we see that, we should recognize that t is the independent variable, which means the derivative of x is no longer one, it's the x dt. In fact, it mentions it here. four times five X plus Y to the power of three. The derivative of the inside five times DX DT plus DY DT. Minus X gives us minus DX DT and number six, any number results in zero when you differentiate and we are done. With calculus, just plug in. You can solve for the uh, y dt or just plug in, and that's just as good. Let's replace the x with 2, y with negative 8, the x dt with 1. This is 2 cubed, you get 8. 4 times 8 is 32. You can take this to the other side, make it positive one. 
And from here to here, I have shown you before, but let's just say we're gonna divide by 32. And this is one fast way to do that. And finally subtract five to get the final answer, negative 159 over 32. A 20 foot ladder leans against a building. The base moves away at a rate of two feet per minute. What is the fine? What is the rate of change for the height when the ladder is 12 feet from the building? Setting is important. Always draw a setting when you can when it comes to application problems. So here's the ladder leaning against the building, it goes this way, and it looks something like that. So this way, as it moves, creates a speed of dx dt, which is two feet per minute. As it comes down, creates a speed of dy dt, which is missing speed or rate, if you will. And we want to know what that is when x is 12 feet. We notice this is a right triangle. And we can use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that means x squared plus y squared equals the length of the ladder fixed at 20, so 20 squared. So let's write all of this. So dx dt is given. Here's the formula we're using from Pythagorean theorem. And we are looking for dy dt at a specific moment where x is 12. We are going to differentiate this expression with respect to t. So dx, 2 dx dt plus 2 dy, 2, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. The right side is 400. It's a number and it is therefore zero when you differentiate. We are practically done. We can plug in and find it because this is the only calculus step. However, y is not given, so if you plug in x equals 12 into this Pythagorean identity, you can find the missing y. Now we have everything, and we can find the missing dy dt. So we plug in everything except the missing dy dt, and we find dy dt to be negative 3 halves feet per minute. By the way, I hope you realize x is increasing. Therefore, dx dt is positive. Y is x is increasing, dx dt is positive. Y is decreasing, dy dt is negative. We want to remind you about how to find limits. You just plug in. So you want a limit of a function as x approaches whatever. You do the work, you plug in and observe. So what happens? If you get to a number, you're done. If you get to zero over a number, you're done. If you get to a number over zero, it's either infinity or negative infinity, you need to figure it out. If it gets to zero over zero, infinity over infinity or infinity minus infinity, we have a form known as indeterminate. So 
So we want to find the limit. The technique is when it approaches infinity for a rational expression to divide by highest degree term in the denominator. I'm going to show you both ways. Number one, just divide by highest degree term in the denominator, which happened to be x squared. So divide by x squared. I hope you realize this goes to zero. This goes to zero. The answer is two. However, a good practice would be to simplify if you can a rational expression so this expression can be simplified by factoring out x plus four So we just factor it out. So we can deal with the factored format. Now we divide by highest degree term in the denominator again, but this time we divide by x. And that results in the same. Doesn't make that much of a difference here. However, look at this one. X is was approaching infinity, but now it's approaching a different number. You don't use the technique that you used here. Use this technique when it, X is approaching infinity or negative infinity. And if you plug in, by the way, you will notice that it approaches zero over zero. But in general, it's a good practice to work with the factored form. So let's do that. If you Plug in now, negative four, you get negative eight over negative eight, which is positive one. Look at this case. Again, it so happened if you plug in, you may notice that the top is zero, the bottom is a number, negative 69 is zero. But let's work with the factored format. And now replace the x with zero, you get zero over negative four, which is zero and you're done. In these two cases, if you plug in, the denominator becomes zero, but again, it's easier to work with the factored format. Please understand the uh, denominator becomes zero when you plug in four. And remember the zero in the denominator is a problem. The numerator is two times four is eight. Four is approaching it from the left. That means like uh, 3.9999, that's the idea. But no matter what, the numerator is eight, very close. And the denominator is zero, very close. However, eight is always positive. Whether you look at the left or right side, that means 7.99 or 8.001, it doesn't matter, it's positive. But what about the denominator? If you plug in four from the left, and I'm going to practically pick up a number as an example. For here, if I pick something like 3.9, okay, a number to the left of four, very close, that gives me negative 0.1. The purpose of this is to make sure I can come up with the proper answer by putting zero from the left or right. And because it's negative zero from the left, so eight over zero is infinity, but is it positive or negative infinity? Positive over negative results in negative infinity. Whereas in part F, we are looking at the same situation. However, the denominator is zero from the right because X approaching four from the right, as an example, 4.1, minus four and gives you positive 0.1. So zero from the right, therefore, positive over positive results in positive infinity. And that's the key here.
we plug in and we observe. So this one becomes e to the power of negative infinity, which is zero. Class e to the power of negative infinity means one over e to the power of infinity, which means one over infinity, which means zero. And the answer is 12 over four or three, and we are done. Now, we are looking at the same question almost, but here we had e to the power of negative t, but it's e to the power of positive t, so it becomes three times e to the power of infinity. And e to the power of infinity is infinity class. So what you're looking at 12 plus four, 12 over four plus three times infinity, which is infinity, and this results in zero. The top is 12 and the bottom is infinity. All right. Um, I hope you realize that ultimately this works like the first one. This was e to the power of minus t and t was infinity is e to the power of t, but t is replaced with negative infinity and makes this one the same as the very first one. So the third example ultimately results in the answer as the first one. So pay attention to t approaching infinity here. This is negative t t approaching negative infinity, and this is positive t. They give us the same answer. In this case, t is approaching zero, so replace it. What is e to the power of zero? One, so 12 over four plus three, which is seven. Let's switch gears, differentiation. And I wanna remind you, if the numerator is just a number, you don't have to use the quotient rule. Bring the bottom up, make it as such. 12 times four plus three e to the power of t to the power of negative one, use the extended power rule, which means 12 times negative one times the parentheses to the power of negative two, and by the chain rule times the derivative of the parentheses, which is three e to the power of t. So 12 times negative one is negative 12 times three, negative 36 e to the power of t. This thing goes down. This portion goes down and take a positive exponent two. Everything else remains up there, making it negative 36 e to the power of t. Finding the limit, I hope you realize in all cases, if we plug in, we get zero over zero, starting with the first one. If we plug in, we get zero over zero. The technique was factoring. Common factor of x minus five is dropped. Five plus five, 10 over five or two is the final answer. If you plug in, you get zero over zero. You multiply by LCD, this is a complex fraction, which is four x, you also divide by it because this is simply one. The blue fraction equals one. Remember, the zero in the denominator creates a problem. So the denominator, you just keep it intact. Remember, x is approaching negative four, so this becomes zero. So you keep it intact as a product. The numerator, if you multiply four x by the first one gives you x, by the second one gives you plus four. Now common factor of x plus four can be dropped. 
So we go through the process to get rid of the zero in the denominator. Now replace the X with negative four, you get one over negative 16, which means minus one over 16. You can put the negative anywhere. It's a good practice to either put it in front of a fraction bar or in the numerator. Plug in and you get zero over zero. The technique was to multiply by conjugate, which means this negative changes to positive and you put it at top as well as the bottom because this fraction equals one. We are using the fact that a minus b times a plus b, they are conjugates. The result is a squared minus b squared. So the denominator, you don't touch it because remember h is approaching zero. That is really the problem. So you write them as a product. The numerator, this is a squared. It comes out as one plus h minus b squared. One squared is one. One and negative one cancel each other. H cancels out the H, giving us one in the numerator. If I plug in, this is the square root of one, which is one and one, two. So the answer is one half. We want to differentiate. In this case, we can put a raised dot in between, and therefore we are using the product. e to the power of two x, the answer is e to the power of two x times two times ln x, plus ln x gives us one over x times the first piece. And we are done with calculus the common factor of e to the power of two x comes out. And you write the rest. That's part A. Part B, you're dealing with a law which has a base other than E. The first thing we want to simplify this and decompose this. It cannot be done. We just go with the differentiation. First, flip this over, this concept of one over f of x. So one over x squared plus one. Then by the chain rule, I need the derivative of that times the derivative of this, which is two x. Because the, chain, the base is different, times one over natural log of the base, which is five. And we are going to rewrite this. And we are done. One thing which is important, the reason we keep the x squared plus one before natural log of five, because if you put it afterwards, one may think it's a part of the argument of natural log. So let's write it in this fashion to be on the safe side. For a question such as part C, first we want to use our knowledge of logs to decompose completely, which is ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. ln of the top is ln two plus ln x. So this is ln two x class, okay, this two. Really we had ln two x. resulting in this. Now we are going to differentiate piece by piece. Ln two is a number, the answer is zero. Ln x is one over x minus one over two x plus one times the two, the chain. 
you take a common denominator of x times 2x plus 1. So 1 times 2x plus 1 minus 2 times x. So everything is algebra except this part. This is the only calculus part. 2x cancels out negative 2x. This is our final answer. Final answer. We have an expression here, lowercase f of x equals four e to the power minus 0.2x minus sine x. We wanna differentiate and integrate. I wanna do that uh, uh, on the same page so we can again compare and contrast. Differentiation, four times negative 0.2 e to the power minus 0.2x. That's the thing I want you to see when you differentiate. Exponential answer is itself, and you multiply by negative point. Minus, the derivative of sine is cosine. So minus cosine x, and you're done. You just rewrite this. The product of these two is negative point 0.8. So that's differentiation. What about integration? Uh, tag along dx first. Four divided by negative point 0.2 then e to the power of minus 0.2x minus the derivative of sine is cosine but the integral of sine is negative cosine so minus negative cosine that means plus cosine and a constant of course 4 over negative 0.2 ends up being negative 20 i hope everybody is okay with that I'm adding this, what if it was an initial value and capital F of zero was equal to 20? What would we do? First and foremost, notice, this means the pair zero comma 20. And if we call this capital F of X, We are going to replace the x with zero and f of x with 20. So we are going to write minus 20 e to the power of minus 0.2 times zero is zero plus cosine zero plus a constant that ends up being number 20. Now, e to the power of zero is one. So is cosine zero. So we have minus 20 plus one plus c equals 20. And I hope you realize that means negative 19 plus c is 20. Move the negative 19. C becomes 39 and capital F of X becomes minus 20 e to the power of minus 0.2 X plus cosine X plus now the C is replaced with number 39. Want to evaluate the integral? Anytime ln is involved, that would be a good choice of u. Let ln of x plus one be u. Therefore, du is one over x plus one dx. I hope you recognize this is the one. So you're looking at u times du. So we are going to replace the zero in here to find the new limit. 
which becomes ln1, and then we plug in 1, and it becomes ln2. Needless to say, ln1 is equal to 0. First, I wanted to show you how we arrive at it. That's why I kept it at ln1. Take a look again. 0, replace it here, you get ln1. 1. 1. 1 and 1 is 2, ln 2. Of course, we know ln 1 is 0, but again, I'm keeping it as ln 1 just to make sure everybody understands how we arrive at it. I didn't want to just put 0. u, the integral is half of u squared from ln 1 to ln 2. If you plug in ln 2, you get 1 half ln 2 squared. If you plug in 0, you get 0. You don't have to even write that. 1 half ln 2 quantity squared. Notice, this is the exact answer class. And that's how you should answer to be on the safe side.